Morning all. Right, it's Thursday and I'm cutting a wedding, a party, a bouquet and my regular arrangement for the hotel up the road. And today's clip, I thought, will be about colour because I'm very lucky. My customers often let me just cut what I like. Um, they trust me to put together a good mix of flowers. And so on a day like today, I can really enjoy myself. The wedding mix needs to be a bit wedding-y and the party needs to be not wedding-y. But it's July, late July, and the sun is getting quite hot, yellow. The light is yellow and low. And so I can play with that a little bit. I think the artistry of working with flowers is, and we are making ephemeral art. I mean, it's not as sophisticated as some, <laughs> but nevertheless, we're painting with flowers. And so working with the light and looking at what the light's going to do, working, working the light under the flower stems, because parties go on into the late afternoon and evening, so we see what happens to them as they go. I think it would make an interesting clip. Anyway, uh, for those of you who uh, are interested in the way that I put the flowers together, come along and um, let's go cutting. And if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe, press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks I give you along the way are useful, you can always buy me a coffee or better still, join my club the links to which are always in the blurb to all my clips. Right, come on then. And if you're wondering what's written on my hand, it says vote, because we have a local election here, a by-election today, and I must remember to vote, but it's going to be hot. So I'm gonna cut the flowers first and go and vote when it's hot this afternoon. Um, and before I do anything else, I've got to wash out my buckets. There's no good cutting flowers in hot weather into dirty buckets because the flowers will just rot. We don't have a cooler, we don't use any flower preserving liquids, we don't use any chemicals. The flowers have been cut today, Thursday, they'll be arranged tomorrow, Friday, and they will be used at the celebrations on Saturday. So they don't have to last an enormously long time, but they have to look amazing the whole time and not flop. So clean buckets, number one. And off we go. Never forget your coffee, important, no matter what time of the day or night. I love a long shadow. Cheers. So I'm up here with the shrubs and perennials first because I want to cut the roses. We haven't got masses because they're beginning to finish their first sort of early summer flush and then I'll, I've given them a cutback actually already. They need a feed and then they just have a little rest through August. Um, and then they'll flower again in September. Uh, but I have enough. So I'm gonna cut some for the wedding, some for the party, and a lot more. I'm cutting in 50s because I've got to be fast. So if I haven't got 50 of anything other than the roses, I'm not gonna cut it. And yeah, 14 buckets for the wedding, seven buckets for the party, Let's go. <laughs> hurry, hurry, hurry. I'm cutting the roses 25 to a bucket because they are quite dewy and I don't want to squash them. Um, one of the reasons roses cost a lot of money when you buy them from a florist is that they take a great deal longer to cut per stem. It's not just the scent and the romantic beauty of them. It is the fact that every stem, they take more room in the bucket. They are they have to be handled very, very carefully. You don't want to bruise them. Anyway, here's a Queen of Sweden. Looking very lovely, though I'll say it myself. And this one is... Gentle Hermione. And over here, Vanessa Bell. These are for the wedding, obviously. There are not millions of them, but a few. It's a lovely morning for cutting. It's 
So with the wedding, I'm cooling it down when I feel like it with these cool Allium colours. And I'm warming it up when I feel like it with deeper pink um, Achillea and these deeper pink roses. And the reason I've got them is because that'll give me depth of field. And then I can have some dark foliage and it won't look too weddingy, but it'll still be weddingy. Whereas... I'm stopping the party from looking too weddingy by adding these orange geums and I've gone darker on the alliums um, and the roses are roses there's one for each posy but they're not really the focus of the thing they're just there so I'm going to keep it sort of brighter anyway sun's up cardigan's off patch looking good Right, on to cut some hydrangeas, I think. And some lovely Verona Castrum. Promise you I'll leave enough for the bees. Look how they love it. So this lovely timely rain we've had means the mint is looking fantastic. Uh, so I'm gonna cut this apple mint for the wedding but I'd like a bit of darker colour and sort of richer tone. So we'll go for chocolate mint for the party. There are butterflies everywhere. It's fantastic. Right, there's the first 400. Party at this end, sort of grassy, hairy, wild. And then we go more wedding, wedding, wedding. But the wedding, I've got to watch it so it doesn't get too flat coloured. It's important it doesn't look too funereal. So, hold the line caller. I take these back, have some breakfast, fill up the trolley and go again. Meanwhile, in the polytunnels, Fabrizio is cutting sweet peas. Oh, yes, he is. So for the wedding, look, this is why we have a darker leaf. And also the, there's a bit of orange in the echinacea that warms the whole thing up. There's a bit of rust in the physocarpus that warms the whole thing up. Pale pink and white can be very blue. So coming along nicely, here we have cheerful party a little hydrangea but not too much i know she wants to do a couple of tall things but not too much because she can't use them in posies on the table they're too heavy um but it's a nice sort of cheerful combo party-ish and then over here serious stylish grown-up wedding and you see why i add that depth of field with the rust color of the physocarpus it's so that you can see in this very high summer sun, pale colours just disappear, are bleached out by the light. And so that's why I've added the depth from things like the Achillea and the Physocarpus. But equally, look, this lime green of the um, Hydrangea paniculata limelight is almost yellow in the mix and you're gonna need a little bit of that otherwise it's too flat you don't need a flat color you need this depth of field you need a bit of zing um, but then the formality comes with things like the variegated cornus hello tea cake she's off and an added bonus i've just been cutting well fabrizio has been cutting the sweet peas so both the wedding and the party have bunches of sweet peas to add to the table centres. Just little things. It's, it's all about detail, really. If I'm running short later, I can cut a bit of wild carrot, but I think I'm going to be all right. So um, I think I'll leave it for the butterflies. It's lovely, isn't it? So here is the wedding. And so it's got whitey bits for the wedding feel but there's a lot of depth in this. It's not just pale pink, but by cutting the Amy Visnagam and it's still quite green, that's depth. 
um, the the rust in the centres of the echinacea is depth. The dark, not too much, but a little bit dark red rusty physocarpus depth. There are the roses tucked in there. And lots and lots of other little bits. I've done quite a lot of, weirdly, I've gone unexpectedly, there's a bit of purple, but the purple look, the Verbena bonariensis, the stems, they see the rust in there? So it's all pulling itself together. And these roses, they too, it's the same tone of rust. It's not rusty, obviously they're not rusty, but the, the roses have that, it's the same tone of red that's coming through from the physocarpus. But it faded and it ends up being these pale roses. So it's quite a nice mix. I'm quite pleased with this. This is for a DIY wedding, so I'm not doing any of this except for the bride's bouquet. And I've been very generous. I've cut quite a lot extra, um, but it's a big order. So for me, when I've got a big order, I'll always put a bit extra in because I can. Um, and that means that I will take the bride's bouquet, the ingredients for the bride's bouquet, out of this tomorrow morning when I make it. I don't know, I'm quite pleased with that. I'll show you the bouquet when I've made it. And the party's much, much less matchy-matchy. And there's room for another couple of buckets to keep it really zingy and a bit of that festival feel. So I'm going to go after some of those bronze fennel and some helichrysum and uh, some orange, more orange with the um, calendula, things like that. In the end, I took the hydrangeas out of the party mix. They were too heavy um, and weighty with this quite light feathery look, although I have given them some really great big old gladioli. Uh, forgive the Australian accent, cod Australian accent there. Um, and so that will make a very pretty party, very relaxed, kind of, you know, just family and friends in a marquee. And uh, my client is going to pick up this evening at half past six. And so I put the extra hydrangeas with the wedding. They won't mind, I shouldn't think. Um, and I don't have to cut any extra to do the bride's bouquet. There's plenty in here for me to make the bouquet with. I love this combination. I think the moodiness of it is very fine, but there's light as well. You've got to have depth and light in flowers. You can't just have, if I had it all white on a white tablecloth, you wouldn't see anything. Lovely mix for a DIY wedding. I think there'll be enough for them there. So it's Friday morning and I'm in my pajamas because um, I want to get this the bouquet made that people are collecting from far, far away um, in a van, which I'm glad of because there's a lot of flowers here, <laughs> down here. That's not going to fit in the back of a car. I always have to talk to my customers and say, do please, do please turn up yesterday's the collecting for the party um my colleague my friend rang up and said so when are they, are they ready and i said yes but please when you come a bring the big car <laughs> and put the seats down because and take everything you know take the boxes or whatever else you've got in the back of the car out so there's room so luckily she did but people don't necessarily realize how much space flowers take anyway the people are coming today and are bringing a van which i'm glad about but I've got to make the bouquet, so I'm going to make it in my pyjamas and I'll put it on a, um, you know, one of the speedy uppy things. A wiggly wiggly thing, as somebody said last week. So you can see me making it. I'm sorry, I can't make the wiggly wiggly thing go sl more slowly. I don't know how you do that, but at least I can get that far. Okay, I'll make the bride's bouquet and then I'll talk to you about it. And we'll look at the colours.
and there she is. Now, <laughs> I know it's enormous, but so much lovely material. Anyway, um, I felt like making an enormous prize for Kay. So I'm just gonna tie her up with good old raffia. So there she is, uh, and I, <laughs> she is enormous. And I want to talk about the color though, because look at this dark, this dark foliage in here. What it's giving is depth of field. If she's gonna carry it probably like this. Um, and I think without the depth, the light this morning is quite sideways because it's half or six in the morning. And so you see what I mean about the light getting underneath. It warms it up. If I had this all white and pale, it would be very, very boring. It's the same with the dark pink rose. It's just a bit of a kick for it to give it depth. And in real life, it looks better. Weirdly, the film is making it look a bit sharp, but in real life, it's absolutely breathtaking. And I'm gonna put it in water before it all collapses in a heap. Take the ugly bucket away. Oh yes. What do you think? <laughs> I'm very happy with that. I'll, I'll take the camera off the thing and show you close-ups. Right, so now you're gonna get the detail of the color and you'll see how all the, it's very important to stop this mix being too flat. And by adding in a little bit of this lovely Physocarpus, it's made depth. Here we have the color of the rusty color of the inside of the Physocarpus is reflected in the inside of the Verbena bonariensis. And it is also, if you look, look, set this color, this color, but also the color of this pink rose, they're all in the same zone and they are warming up what otherwise might be quite a cold look. I'm quite pleased with that. Ah, oh, yes, I hope, I hope some lovely photographer takes a picture of it tomorrow and I get a copy. You don't always see pictures of the flowers in action, but sometimes. And you, you can imagine how you could take, take away this blue phlox, for example, and the whole thing is pinker. But I like it because I don't like flowers to be, too, I don't like color to be too obvious. I like it to be a bit jolly led, as the French would call it, which is pretty ugly. So you, you make the colors work together and then you see more. If you, if it's all too matchy matchy, you don't see anything. It's just bland, it looks like safe wallpaper. Anyway, there you go. That is the wedding in a nutshell. This rose is Silas Marna. No, it's not. It's St. Swithin's, sorry. That's St. Swithin's. That one. That's Gertrude Jekyll. Many, many, many thorns <laughs> have had to be taken off that rose. Right. And now it's the end of the day and I forgot to make my little thank you very much for watching clip. So thank you very much for watching. The other flowers have all long gone. The wedding flowers were collected in a removals van by two chaps who are experts in moving antiques. So um, lucky flowers. They were very carefully escorted off the premises with the bride's bouquet in a box between the two drivers, between the two chaps in the cab being especially looked after. That's very good. 
Uh, the other flowers have all gone. And now I am just um, photographing options for vases for an event in September because the day, you know, <laughs> we never stop. Uh, it's all, it's always busy. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Um, and I'll see you very soon.